Hey guys, Dirty here and welcome to this video. Today we're gonna take a look at this really tiny cute 3D printer, the EC3 Nano. So full disclosure, EC3 did send me this 3D printer over for review, but they didn't pay me in any way, so this review is still completely objective. Now, I was quite excited to receive this printer, since it does quite a few things very differently than many other th printers in a day and age where basically every printer is a Prusa i3 clone. If you look behind me, I have an Ender 3 FSC 10 and there are so many other versions of the Ender 3 out there, and they're all basically the same machine. But this one, this one is different. For one, it's a lot smaller than all the other printers, this entire printer fits in the build volume of the Ender 3, which is already more like a mid-range uh, printer in size. And it also moves the axis around a little bit differently than most printers. To be as compact as possible while still having an okay sized print pad, it is moving the head around in X, Y and Z direction while the print stays perfectly in one place. And while this way of moving the head around creates the largest possible build volume inside of a small cube like this, the build volume is still tiny at 90 by 110 by 110 millimeters. That basically allows you to print a vase like this, but not much bigger. And for small things like that, it works out perfectly fine, but you do run into limitations quite quickly, where you have to either print something smaller or split it up into multiple parts. But we're already getting ahead of ourselves. So this printer comes completely pre-assembled already in the box. The only thing you have to do is click in the filament holder and you're good to go. It also comes with a dedicated slicing program that you can copy from the SD card, which you don't even have to install. You can just double click the icon, drag and drop your SDL files in there, choose one of the profiles or create your own and slice and you're good to print. It's super easy to use. It just takes like three or four clicks. No need to set up anything. And then you just plug in the SD card and press the start button. And pressing the start button is about the only thing you can do in this printer. Because there is no screen, no wheel or anything, it's just one button. And then to change the filament on the back there is also a feed button where you can either unwind the filament or uh, feed out filament. But that means there is no way to home the machine or change any settings on the fly or even tell how far your print is along. That is a little bit of a bummer, but we also do have to keep in mind that this printer is not only tiny, but also very affordable. So we can't expect all the high-end features. There is a version of this printer that costs uh, like 50 bucks more that has a screen, but it only has a screen for 50 bucks more, which I wouldn't recommend as that doesn't offer you that much. The screen is super tiny in the front and at 50 bucks more, we're coming into pricing categories of the Ender 3, which, as you're gonna see, does have some advantages. But let's stick to this printer for now. As long as you're printing in PLA, which is probably what you're gonna wanna do anyways, you are perfectly fine. There is no heated bed, but there is a removable build platform that has the kind of fake build tag on it that, have, that the most printers nowadays have, which is really great. The prints stick perfectly fine. And with PLA, you don't need a heated bed anyways. The only issue is that the magnet in the build bed is super strong. So taking it off of the printer is actually really difficult. You kind of have to pry in on one corner with like a screwdriver or something. But every time I try to take it out, it I like damaged the corner a little bit. So that really is not what you want to do, especially since everything else about this printer is really nice and user friendly made so that kids can use it. But going in there, prying with a screwdriver to get the bed out, that's not something that kids should do. And the extruder itself, it's nothing special. It is not very strong or anything, uh, but it works. Like, I haven't had any issues with it binding up or not extruding. But in general, the, all the motion systems, they are kind of loose and very thin uh, rods used there. So it's not the sturdiest construction. The frame itself is really nice and strong, uh, so that's not going to be an issue. But like, I can wiggle around uh, quite a lot here, which also does show in the print results. 
Some other things to consider are because you don't have a screen, it's really hard to level the bed. You can't just go into a leveling routine. Now in the manual they say you can just type up manually a text document where it goes to the zero positions, but you don't want to do that. What I found works just perfectly fine is during your first print, just tuning it a little bit uh, on the first layer so that it is extruded evenly. The default profiles all use a raft, which I guess is a good idea on a machine like this where you don't have the bed maybe perfectly level. So with a raft it works out perfectly fine. The only kind of annoying part uh, about the whole user interface is that the SD card slot and the little selector switch where you can unload and load the filament is in the, on the back next to the input jack and the other cable where you can't really read any of the labels on the switch and it's really hard to reach so that is really uh, kind of annoying. I wish that the SD card slot and the switch to feed the filament uh, were both in the front. That would make it so much better. But I suppose the, the way that the internals are laid out, uh, this was uh, cheaper to do. There is also no way of kind of having a bigger filament spool mounted. Uh, you can buy uh, these small 250 gram spools uh, from EC3 as well, but they are kind of expensive for the amount of filament you get. So if you want to use a bigger spool, uh, like a normal one kilogram spool, you're going to have to either build or buy your own spool holder, and that's going to just add extra size to the uh, printer, which is kind of a bummer. Like, I think it wouldn't have been that hard to kind of create a uh, amount here on the side. The only issue that is that it might uh, tend to tip over then, but I don't think it would be impossible to create something with one of these doors. And speaking of doors, there are four of these plastic doors uh, that just snap in to the frame here. You can insert it here. They're all exactly the same, so you can just use those to cover up the sides uh, to kind of give more protection so that no dirt comes in or no kids stick their fingers into moving parts. The top uh, is of course open since that's where the filament and the cables come out. So enough talked about the external appearance of this printer. Let's talk about the print quality. And you can quite quickly tell that print quality wasn't the main uh, attention point uh, when they designed this printer. It was more about creating a user-friendly printer that little kids can use as well, or if you have no experience in making at all, you're still going to be able to work with this printer no problem. But the, the print results themselves, they aren't the greatest. For one, the extrusion is just not very uniform at all. There are clear lines, there are some blobs every once in a while, and just not all that great. Also, I already talked about how the whole mechanics are not that stable, and that does show in the print results as well. There also is a huge issue with string. And you can see that if you look inside of the vase uh, or on all the other parts. This little uh, spinner here that I printed, that printed fine on every other printer I ever had here in the studio, had so many strings that it was like really hard to actually get it moving and just that even now it doesn't turn all that well. There also is no part cooling fan whatsoever and that especially shows in s s smaller parts like the chimney here of the Banshee which is all out of whack uh, where it just didn't cool down quickly enough. So that is something that you just have to keep in mind. If you're just getting started uh, and you want to create some 3D prints that are cool and you want to experience the technology, these print results are perfectly fine. They work, I haven't had any issues with it, it printed fine every time and the results look okay. But just if you compare them to like what an Ender 3 can do or a CR10 or many other low cost printers that are in the same price range or maybe like a little bit more, it just can't compete at all. Now EC3 does offer a kind of upgraded version of this. Uh, for almost a hundred bucks more though. It does have a uh, way stronger like general build and has a touch screen and all these nice features but it does cost over two hundred dollars at which point there is a lot of competition. This printer itself is only at around 120, probably prices fluctuate a bit, but at around 120 there is not all that much competition and with 
the special features of it being very user-friendly and easily adaptable for children. Although the print results are not that great, I think the printer still has some value for some people. Now, I'm not saying that if you have an Endo 3 and you need a second printer that you should buy this one. No, stick to another Endo 3. Also, if you think that you do have some experience in making and you're not extremely limited in size where this is all that you can have on your desk uh, if you're in a dorm room or something, then maybe go look at something a little bit different. But if you want something that is super tiny, that fits basically anywhere, you can set, set this on a bedside table, you can set this on just a shelf somewhere and it's not going to take a lot of space. It also is fairly quiet. Uh, it's not quite as quiet as the silent mode on the Prusa printers, but it is way, way, way quieter than something like an Ender 3 or a CR10 or uh, any other printers that I tested that, that aren't super high end. You can't hear much fan noise at all, and the axes that are moving around are fairly quiet as well. You do hear some motor noises, but it is not too distracting if you're just in the room. You can easily be in the room, have a conversation, and you notice that it's printing, but it's not annoying at all. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. You can also comment down below. Would you be interested in a printer like this? Maybe for a friend, or your children, or some family? Let me know. You can also check out my Twitter, Instagram, link down below. And of course, also easy to read. I'm gonna have their store link down below where you can purchase this printer or a different printer from them. So thanks for watching and until next time.